Well, hi, this is Custom Works. I'm Clint Allen, and today we're talking about the 7.3 EOT sensor. What is it? Where is it? Does it cause runnability issues? Yes, it does. Stick around. <laughs> what the f are you doing? <laughs> well, thanks for sticking around through that. So today we're covering the engine oil temperature sensor. And basically this sensor is a thermostat sensor, just to break it down to its most basic element. And basically it takes resistance values based on the oil temperature that is in the high pressure oil pump reserve and takes that signal and optimizes the amount of fuel that is required for starting and operating the motor and it does some other things. So if you're going to skip out of this video four minutes on in, you're going to miss out on some critical information. So the sensor location itself, once again, you open up the hood, you got the reserve tank for the high pressure oil pump behind it. Driver's side is going to be on the back of that high pressure oil pump reserve and it's gonna be above the IRP sensor. So that's the location. If you have basically a 96 through 03, it's gonna have a two wire square or rectangular type connector. And if you have a pre 96, you're gonna have a round connector. Now purpose functions, let's get into that just a little bit here. Uh, it's gonna deliver the fuel based on the normal operating temperature range that the ECM is set up for. The sensor's resistance changes depending on the temperature of the oil and the sensor will produce a value to the computer of zero to five volt signal. So that's calculating that at the power control module. And that right there is gonna send and tell everything in the motor, including the injector driver, of what it is supposed to be doing. So what else does it do? What else does it does besides that? Um, it's gonna determine glow plug on time. It's gonna determine how long the lamp inside the vehicle stays on, on your instrument cluster. It's gonna regulate the exhaust pressure regulator and it's also going to handle the idle speed, the fuel delivery, and injection timing. Now, if a uh, famous mod, and I'm all for this mod, is uh, removing the uh, exhaust pressure regulator, um, we'll get into that in a future video. Instead of leaving that wire dangle or hide somewhere, we're gonna show you what you need to do with that so you're not throwing a ghost code all the time in your computer so and we'll like i said we'll cover that in the future so the pcm adjusts those temperature voltage readings and ohm readings uh, by the increase of temperature and what are the symptoms if you have a going bad or a bad temperature sensor for the uh, oil and what we're gonna see here is gonna be your engine starts, but throws a intermittent cell code, uh, and also throws the code that you can read for your OBD2 code machine. Uh, the 7.3 runs rough until it warms up. Then once it's warmed up, you know, she smooths on out. Uh, you'll have intermittent idle issues when it's cold. Uh, missing hesitation if you just are lightly hitting the fuel pedal and uh, basically anything past that then it just compensates so and uh, worst case scenario you know 
80 degrees out and it's idling at you know 1000 to 1500 uh, rpms because the computer is thinking that the sensor is telling it that it's in cold mode um, also the worst case scenario is is that you're driving on down the road you've been ignoring your cell on the uh, odometer cluster or the gauge cluster and you know you put a piece of electrical tape over it you know the backyard mechanics handy uh, secret weapon uh, and you get to where you're going and it won't start again and you got to let it cool down for 20 or 30 minutes so those are the normal issues uh, when you have one that's going bad or has gone bad so what causes the 7.3 EOT sensor to fail? Believe it or not, in most cases, it's actually the wiring. Uh, the connector either has the ends are frayed or they're starting to break off or somewhere within that wiring leading up to the main plug is gotten worn through and is causing arcing from getting a negative feed into that particular sensor causing all kinds of crazy things to go on in your computer so basically worst case scenario it may not be that sensor and it actually could be the computer in the truck that's starting to go defunct and you know that's no big deal unless if it's your only vehicle but either which way you can send them out and get them rebuilt actually pretty cheaply nowadays uh, a lot of companies have overnight express shipping and they just you know include in the box a return label and you're back up on the road in two days three days i know overnight shipping isn't overnight anymore but anyways uh, because uh, high engine oil temperature basically can be lethal to your 7.3 and you combine that with the sensor for your coolant you know you're sending mixed messages to that computer and we all know that if you toast out your motor a rebuild is pretty darn expensive uh, overheating the oil in the coolant system you know that that messes are up pretty good and uh, idle speed control let's move on to that so generally when your power stroke oil temperature is below 158 degrees Fahrenheit and that's 70 degrees Celsius the EOT signal tells the PCM to incrementally increase the trucks idle on up to about 950 rpms so that's that's about you know the the, the general here but jumping into more technical uh, idle speeds if you have an automatic transmission and your oil temperature is below 32 degrees Fahrenheit and that equates to zero, zero degrees Celsius uh, that's gonna jump that RPM up to about 1200 RPMs until the oil warms up and if you have a manual transmission and your uh, oil temperature is below 95 degrees Fahrenheit and that breaks down to 35 degrees Celsius. The idle right there is also going to jump into that 1,200 RPM range. So that's uh, how that is handled. And if you ever wondered, you know, if you're new to the 7.3s, that why when I start it up, does it automatically shoot way up? Is there a problem? No, there isn't. It's designed to do that. Now, the... PCM default mode so let's say the sensor is going bad or it has gone bad and once again you're ignoring your light on the instrument cluster what it's going to do is the computer is just going to go into a default mode and when it's cold it's just going to assume at startup that it's going to preset at 29 degrees Fahrenheit and the 29 degrees Fahrenheit kind of works out to like you know negative three degrees Celsius and at warm-up or after it's been running for a while the computer is just gonna fault itself at the 212 degrees Fahrenheit and that's gonna be around that 98 degrees Celsius area um, one thing that we don't want to do, and I see this all the time on uh, diesel forums where people are 
stressed out and they're looking for somebody to give them proper information and you get these idiots who don't know what they're talking about and they say just unplug the sensor ah no big deal do not do this it is a bad 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 idea you're sending that computer completely bad information and then you have your temperature sensor sending correct information and it just is going to cause all kinds of runnability issues so let's not be doing that the uh, parts number so let's jump into that now there are three distinctive through the power stroke years sensors and what they have done most companies have taken all three of those sensors and just made it into one so basically pre-1996 that part number is WT5058 if and that crosses into other numbers but basically if you use that number you can pretty much go to eBay Amazon Ford dealer and they'll be able to source that for you based on that number right there um, 94 to 95 uh, if you want to jump into that new style sensor it's not an issue that's the sensor from 99 to 2003 you can just go ahead put that sensor in there and just change your pigtail and uh, plug and you're you're pretty much all set to go um, for uh, 1994 to 2003 the Ford part number is 3F1Z12A648A and Ford actually calls it a sem uh, sender assembly. Uh, you know, who knows where they came up with that. But either which way, keeping in mind that if you're a real purist, um, and you have the round sensor plug in with the older sensors. Yeah, go ahead. You know, just source that particular sensor and put it on in there. It's going to do the same thing. So let's see here. Uh, my suggestion basically is if you got, let's say, 300,000 miles on your truck, and let's face it, most of these trucks are. 20 years and older and this has not been changed it's not that expensive go out get yourself a brand new one and these things just do not last forever it's like anything else as they age slowly they just kind of defunk and you might find that replacing it with a brand new one is going to change the way it runs and it runs better and gets better fuel mileage uh, the sensor wiring harness, you can order that right at the same time and go ahead and change that out. But let's jump on resistance values if you've hit this video and you're looking for information because you're having problems. Well, let's uh, start here with the negative 5 degrees. So let's test that sensor engine running and what we want to do is hit the positive lead of that sensor and use the ground off your battery so at negative five degrees so you're going to go and if you have a temperature gauge that you can you know put on the block itself or on top of that high pressure oil pump reserve and see what that temperature is and then go off of these numbers and once again it's not going to be exactly what we're talking about here because the temperatures are preset here so at negative five degrees uh, fahrenheit which is going to be 20 degrees celsius you're going to have 4.60 volts at 8.22 ohms at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, which is going to be 0 degrees Celsius, you're going to have 4.37 volts and 7.2 ohms. At 176 degrees Fahrenheit, which that equates down to 80 degrees Celsius, you're going to have 1.37 volts 
and 3.84 ohms and at 205 degrees Fahrenheit which is 96 degrees Celsius you're going to have 0.96 volts at 2 ohms and jumping up to 248 degrees Fahrenheit which is 120 degrees Celsius you're going to have 0.53 volts at 1.19 ohms so those are the general area and if you fall outside of that you know you've got yourself a bad sensor and once again they're not that expensive you know you just like I said consider going out and just changing it it's uh, not that big of a deal so diagnostic uh, trouble codes so you got the little you know plug-in unit uh, OBD plug-in unit from uh, your favorite automotive store so let's hit down on that PO code 0197 uh, signal was less than 4 volts for more than 2.2 seconds through the code on the cell on your truck. Uh, next PO code is 0198. Signal voltage was greater than 5 volts for more than 2 seconds. Once again, that's what threw the code in your truck. That's what threw the light on. Next one is PO. 195 and engine oil temperature was less than 150 degrees Fahrenheit and that equates down to the 70 Celsius <coughs> and what we've got going on there is basically that's telling you that the sensor is bad so once again uh, key on engine running um, so you're going to go change it out tool size and torque values basically there's no torque value that anybody's willing to commit themselves to uh, you're screwing something into a thin aluminum housing so basically run her in there snug and give her a little bit of a turn maybe a third halfway turn and don't run the thing home you know where it starts bleeding you'll end up breaking your uh, reserve and uh, then you'll be throwing wrenches down the old driveway. So let's, uh, let's chill out on that. Um, you can use a 21 millimeter or 22 millimeter or one inch deep well socket, but keep in mind that all deep well sockets are not created equal. Some of them are deeper, some of them are more shallow. What you don't wanna be doing is turning in the new one with a substandard size socket as far as length goes and end up busting the plastic on the top of that sensor. If you don't have any type of uh, sockets that are going to be deep enough, well then jump on a open end wrench instead. Um, you know, not big on adjustables, but if that's all you have, let's be careful and use the adjustable wrench and get it in there and once again don't don't run the thing home uh, where she's you know bleeding and crying <laughs> you know just get her in there snug a little bit of a turn you're going to be good to go but basically but, this is a very important sensor it causes a lot of runnability issues and once again if you've had your truck for a long time uh, you know, even the age of the truck, which like I said, we all know that these things are 20 years uh, and older. Just go ahead and change that bad boy out and it's done. You'll, you'll probably never have to do it ever again through the lifetime of the truck uh, while you own it. So I hope you've learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day.